Today, I am going to be teaching a mixed media class. No surprise there, since for the most part, I am a mixed media artist, although I do like watercolors as well, which is so funny because when I first started art, I tried a watercolor class and I hated it. And now I just love it. So you do progress as you go through time. Uh, you know, your desires and your abilities change. And uh, so now I love watercolor, but I also love working with acrylics and doing mixed media type painting. So today, uh, these were the photos that you saw if you saw the graphic. And um, this is a, I like to call it a simple collage type artwork and this is totally mixed media because it uses paper that I painted myself. This one in particular uses an old tea bag uh, tag from an exotic tea. This is a vintage postage stamp. There's acrylic paint on here as well and in the background as well as this is using um, the Stabilo woodies which are um, a type of water soluble oil or wax pastel. And then, oops, this one looks like it's <laughs> not straight in there, but here's another one. And it uses the same kind of um, items. We have a tea bag in the back here. We have a postage stamp. This is some paper that I painted that I'm gonna show you how to do. Acrylic paint, more hand painted paper here. I use the um, wax pastels to go around here and to make little bubbles here. So that is the kind of artwork that we'll be doing today. And I'm going to be starting with showing you how to make some of your own papers as kind of a bonus or a lead in to actually doing this kind of mixed media. Uh, and so the, these are some examples of pieces of papers that I have uh, that I have hand painted. These are tissues. It's a special kind of strong tissue paper that you can get wet and uh, then you can flood it with paint. Here it is in green right here. And here it is in red with a little bit of gold and then some turquoise. So these are papers that I have made myself. Ooh, this one, believe it or not, I love these, which is, um, using black ink on it. So you get something really dramatic, but um, you can make your own exotic papers for collage. And that is uh, what I wanted to show you today. And after the art class, I also wanted to let you know that this is a paper pack that has some of the special paper in it here that I'm gonna show you how to paint on and what to paint on it with. And then there's a stack of the papers here that I've hand painted in various colors. And that is for a winner at the end of the workshop. So uh, if you stick around through the whole thing, then um, you'll be able to get in. If you're on whatnot, you'll be able to get in on the giveaway. So if you are watching from YouTube, I invite you to use either the QR code that's on the top of your screen or there'll be a link in the description of the video on YouTube, and you can use that to come in and um, join us over on WhatNot. Hi there, stay home to shop, welcome in. So you, you'll be able to join us on WhatNot, and uh, that's where we'll have the giveaway after the workshop, and that's also where um, I'll have an auction after the fact. I have some new um, artist trading cards uh, that are going to be on auction this evening um, that I made this week. So, oh, thank you. Stay home to shop. Stay home to shop said, hi, I love your art lessons. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do know that if you are on YouTube, I am also watching the chat. So I have two devices over here that I can watch the chat on, uh, one for whatnot and one for YouTube. So feel free to pop your questions in on YouTube as well, because I will be able to see them and then I'll do my best to answer. Uh, we're also today going to be using um, what I call random like collage papers. So things like this, um, this is from a dress making pattern. It's vintage paper from the 1960s. Uh, there's this kind of rice paper that's pre-printed and I keep my papers 
in these little salad totes like this. So that is all just various pieces of paper for collage. And um, here's some that I bought, but I'm going to show you how you can make paper that's very similar to this um, using that, that wet strength um, tissue paper that I told you about just a few minutes ago. So let me um, tell you some of the other items that we'll be using today. Of course, we're going to be using brushes and palette knives. So there's the palette knife. Um, we're going to need a spray bottle of water. Where did I end up putting my spray bottle of water? There you go. We're going to need a spray bottle of water. We're going to need some acrylic paints. Um, there are two different kinds of acrylic paints we'll be using today. This is a what some might call heavy body or a paint that has more um, more structure to it. But then we're also going to be working with inks. So for instance, this is an F&W ink. Actually, it uh, needs to be mixed up. <laughs> but this is an acrylic ink. There we go. Oh, look at that beautiful color. And um, another type of paint, which is this um, high flow paint from Golden. So Golden makes a special paint called high flow. Even your um, airbrush paints that have an acrylic base to them will work for the techniques I'm going to be showing you as well. So this happens to be high flow paint. I have a whole bin of it over here. This is a, an example of a kit that you can get that has the high flow paint in it, um, which I find to be more economical if you buy it in the set. And also on my website, um, where I had just shown this a moment ago about my YouTube channel, also on my website, which is Detour deetsart.com um, there is a uh, in the menu there is a um, supply links so if you see what I'm working with today and you want to pop in and purchase some um, feel free to go on to my website and do the uh, supply links and look through there and you'll find various things like the acrylic paints whoops like the paints I'm talking about today, um, some of the mediums that I'm talking about today, um, paper, specialty papers, all that kind of stuff. I do. I don't sell those items on whatnot. What I sell on whatnot is my handmade papers. So, for instance, papers similar to this, um, and also my marbled papers because I hand marble papers as well. And then I sell finished artwork. So. If you are on Whatnot, feel free to go into the little house at the bottom of the screen. And if you look under the Buy, it, uh, buy Now, under the Buy Now tab, you're going to see artworks that are available for sale right now. Um, and they come in various sizes. So from smaller pieces up to uh, very large pieces, there are even some greeting cards in the Buy It Now. Um, and but they're they're handmade greeting cards with uh, artwork similar to what we're going to do today. And then um, in addition, there are some supplies. So if you type in the word supplies in the buy it now, you will find that I have some paper packs in there. Um, let me see. Ooh, let me find them here. So I have big collections of artist papers, as you could imagine. <laughs> so one of the things that's under supplies in the Buy It Now is my professional artist acid-free paper pack. Although I think I'm not sure that this is acid-free. This is a vintage map. So sometimes there will be items in there that are um, fun to put into your artwork, old books, and they may still have some acid in them, but once you uh, use the acrylic mediums and you lock them in place, you should be fine. But this is a, an example of a paper pack like that. Then I also have Joss paper. Joss paper is a ceremonial paper from Asia. So again, in the little house at the bottom of the screen on whatnot, you can purchase these paper packs. This is a large Asian paper pack. And um, ooh, my favorite is the dragons on the back here. And uh, so those are available if you go to the Buy It Now and you type in the word supplies. Also, I take apart tea bags like this. So these are tea bags and tags. So you can buy a tea bag uh, pack. And that also comes with one of these large round tea bags. 
which may look like a coffee filter, but this is for medicinal tea. So it has all kinds of cool like yellow and pink colors in them. And this is an example of an artwork that I'm working on uh, on one of those large tea bags. So you'll get one large tea bag, some of these tags, and, um, and then some of the empty tea bags if uh, you buy a tea bag pack. And then last but not least, one of my favorite things to include in my artwork is vin uh, vintage postage stamps, or uh, they don't even have to be vintage, just postage stamps. I'm a nut for postage stamps. <laughs> and I have a whole bin here full of postage stamps uh, from around the world, both in the United States and many, many different countries. So you can order under supplies in the Buy It Now, a postage stamp pack. So this is an example of a stamp pack. And um, I put those in the Buy It Now on Whatnot rather than putting them in the um, auction because I find that uh, people will come anytime they can go to my store and purchase those. So that is the purpose of making them um, a supply under Buy It Now rather than having them as part of my auctions after my art lessons. All right, there are a couple of art lessons uh, printed out that you receive with some paper in the Buy It Now as well. And all you have to do is type in art project and then you will find those as well. Uh, but we are going to, um, all right, I did tell you some of the other items that you're going to need earlier with the paint and some of the mediums, the brushes, the um, palette knives, and then this is palette paper. So um, palette paper has that like shiny surface to it. And I use this in many different ways, but it's perfect when you're working with acrylics to put your acrylic on here and um, do your color mixing or I also put my acrylic mediums on here and then pick it up with a brush or a palette knife right from the palette paper. So this is a throwaway palette paper. And then uh, as far as the surface of what we're gonna work on today, um, once the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to make those papers. But after showing you how to make the papers, we're going to build our mixed media painting on a surface. And so the different kinds of surfaces that you can use are um, papers like this. So this is simply watercolor paper. So you see here where it says watercolor paper. All right, so you can do it on watercolor paper. You can do it on mixed media paper. You can also, because we're using acrylics, you can also paint on a uh, canvas. So this happens to be a canvas um, board instead of a stretch canvas, but you can also do the same technique on a regular canvas. And this is a, um, it has a canvas surface to it, uh, like a textured surface, but it's actually a kind of uh, like a cardboard particle board um, that I purchased uh, because they're very inexpensive and they're good for using with students. The only problem with it is, I don't know if you can see that, but it bows. You see how it bowed like that? Um, and so it bowed because as the acrylic paint dried that I put on it, um, it caused it to shrink. Acrylic paint shrinks a little bit when it dries, so it whoop, pulled it up like that. And one of the ways to prevent it from creating that bow is to put um, gesso on the back of it first. So had I put the gesso on the back of it and then put the regular acrylic on the front, I wouldn't have gotten uh, the bow out of it. But in this case, I put the gesso on it after the fact and it's relieving some of the bow, but not all of it yet. <laughs> you can always put it after it's fully dry in between a couple of books and leave it for a day or two and that'll flatten it. But hey, we wanna get on with our painting, right? <laughs> At least I know I do. Um, another kind of paper that I like to use a lot is this handmade paper. And um, one of the nice features of handmade paper is that it has a deckle edge all around. So what does that mean? Deckle means that it's not cut. So this is actually formed on a screen. This paper is made on a screen and it's left to have every side Hey, Salmon's Girl, welcome in. Um, every side is rough. 
So I love that about these handmade papers. And uh, so I'm gonna show you when we get to the actual mixed media painting part that I've already put some acrylic paint on a couple of those. And um, I like this four by six size so that I can put it directly onto a greeting card by using that size. All right, let me uh, set this aside. And now here's something that you may not be aware of, but watercolor paper comes in black as well. So this is a, <coughs> excuse me, black watercolor. It's called the Stonehenge Aqua cold press. So there it is. It has the regular watercolor paper texture, but instead of being white paper, it's black paper. It's so cool. So um, yeah, love using those. And I've actually started one already um, here, a mixed media piece, and I'm using the drama of the black paper with it um, so that you know, we can really make that pink and the other colors pop off of it. But I wanted you to be aware that there's such a thing as black mixed media and black watercolor papers, which are great for what it is that we're doing. <laughs> now, um, what I use a lot and what is really my workhorse in the studio is um, a type of mixed media paper or watercolor paper and a pad. This happens to be the Canson mixed media paper, but also I have the Canson XL watercolor papers as well um, in a pad like this, a spiral. And I like the spiral because then I can open it like this and lay it flat and work in it. But what you're gonna find is when with paper, just as with this kind of cardboardy kind of surface, that when you go and you start putting acrylic paint on front the front as it dries it's going to shrink and so it's going to curb the paper so what i've done is um here this is a piece right here that is uh, blank and ready to go but what i did to help prevent the paper from curling um, as i work with acrylics is i went on the back and i covered the back with gesso so gesso is a primer. It's an acrylic primer. This is an example of a white gesso. Gesso comes in many different colors, but um, I keep a lot of white gesso on hand and I will prepare a paper that I'm gonna work on by putting gesso on the back of it before I start painting on the front of it. And that helps to keep the paper from bowing um, a lot as you put wetness and you put the um, acrylic paints on the front of it. Um, the nice thing also about using gesso on the back of your paper is that you can use a paper that's not as heavy as 140 pound. Most of my watercolor papers that I use are a heavy paper called 140 pound. Um, but you can get the papers, the mixed media papers that are 90, what it's called, 98 pounds. You'll see like a nine, eight and a little pound sign um, on the, the front cover. And so by putting the gesso on the back of the page, you're actually making the page heavier and then it really will take a beating. And it, um, that's a good trick if you don't want to spend the money for the heavier 140 pound paper. But of course, you're going to buy gesso. Gesso can be cheap, you know, don't worry about it. Just get whatever gesso they have there in the store when you're standing there. <laughs> there are different grades of gesso. It'll say student grade or it'll say um, professional gesso. The difference is the professional gesso is thicker. It's like very pasty. And so that you use, you only have to coat your surface once rather than maybe coating it two or three times if you're using a more of a student grade gesso that's going to be a little thinner okay that's just that's really the only difference that i've found is in the thickness of the gesso so this happens to be the pebio gesso um pebio is a paint company that i work with hey can you see i got their uh, apron too um <laughs> but it's a paint company that i work with out of france um but i work with the folks in north america and uh so they have white gesso and black gesso but also i think it is holbein has a whole range of various colors of gesso and i know in the past that liquitex 
um, which is a paint brand as well, has also had lots of different colors of gesso. But you can also take the white gesso and you can tint it with any other acrylic paint. So if you have a tube of acrylic paint or you have one of these uh, bottles of acrylic paint like this, you can put it in with your gesso and tint the gesso to all different colors. And another thing to know about gesso is in general, gesso will dry with a very uh, matte finish. That is the purpose of it is to give you a nice matte um, primed surface before you paint with acrylics. And so this gesso has a nice toothy matte finish to it when it's dry. And uh, that can be very helpful to know that as well. And one last thing, gesso does come in clear. So a lot of people didn't know that, but the cool thing about using a clear gesso is that um, you can coat something like say a piece of wood, or you can coat something that you've already started to work on, but you wanna give the whole thing an even, um, an even look to the surface. Maybe you have a magazine page in there and then you have some other kinds of papers in there. And so you've got the difference between gloss and matte going on and you want the whole thing and it's easier to photograph if the whole thing has a nice matte finish to it. So it can be helpful to use a clear matte medium uh, in order to brush over top of the work as a final coat, just add a tiny bit of water to it. It almost acts like a varnish but it just gives you that nice matte finish um, over the whole piece of work if you use the clear matte gesso over top of it. Plus it has some grittiness to it. I really like that. Uh, let me see, something happened here on my iPad. Let me bring my show back up. Hold on just a moment. Okay, there we go. I just make sure I can see all of the comments <laughs> that are coming in. Any questions? So as we go, feel free to ask questions. Um, I am more than happy to answer, and that's why I have several devices going off to the side here, because I wanna be sure that once we get going that uh, I can see what y'all are asking. All right, now I am going to go over top of the table. All right, so what we're going to start out with is we are gonna start out with creating some of our own papers like this. Um, and so this is a type of tissue paper, but it's a strong enough tissue paper that you're able to get it wet and have it not disintegrate on you. Um, the other thing that you can do with this kind of paper is to create your own mark making. So for instance, something like this, uh, something like this. You know that I like to make Hey there, k &L Resale. Welcome in, welcome in. Um, I like to do mark making, and so we can do the mark making on this tissue as well, or we can do the mark making on rice paper, either way. But rice paper, I've found if you get the rice paper too wet, it literally disintegrates. <laughs> so if you're mark making like this, you're fine on rice paper. But if you uh, want to get it wet and create papers like this, where the whole thing has some wishy-washy paint colors on it, then you're gonna need to use something called wet strength uh, tissue. And I have wet strength tissue in a pack along with some papers that I've already made of various colors. And that's gonna be the giveaway at the end of the workshop. So you're gonna get a piece of the uh, wet strength tissue, and then also some of the pieces that I've already painted for you. Uh, but that's gonna be at the end of the workshop. So let me go ahead and we're gonna start out. What I've done is I've taken, um, this is what the wet strength tissue paper looks like. Uh, it's by a company called Be Creative or Carnival. And you can find it um, at the supply links on my website. So as I mentioned before, my website is deetsart.com. It'll switch you over to deetsart.gallery, but that's still me. And um, then you can go to the supply links and you can find where to pick up some of this wet strength tissue paper. Um, and 
the reason it's called wet strength, of course, is that you can get it all wet and it doesn't matter. Uh, it, will st it won't disintegrate on you because normal wrapping tissue can disintegrate on you. The other thing, like I said, mentioned before that I like to use is this uh, Asian sketch paper. That's also available in the supply links on my, um, on my website. But what I noticed with the rice paper is it's perfect for doing this kind of mark making, but it's not good for doing this kind of work because it just falls apart. <laughs> so it just depends on what it is that you want to do to create your own papers that you're then going to incorporate into your artwork. So for instance here, the red piece of paper in the background here is from a large sheet of tissue where I colored the whole tissue the way that I'm gonna show you here shortly. Hey there, Jager's Jam House. Welcome in, welcome in. I'm showing uh, how to do some mixed media painting today. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make some fun papers. So let's start out with mark making. The, um, what I like to do is I like to work with an ink of some sort. Um, hold on just a second, let me get this. So there's a little container for my ink. And then um, usually I'll use just, uh, what is that, applesauce um, containers or something like that left over. And what I wanna do is I wanna use a type of ink or fluid acrylic paint that is not, um, that is waterproof when it's dry. So it is not a watercolor, it will not lift back up. All right, so um, I was showing you, for instance, you can use anything that says, this says acrylic ink on it. So the acrylic inks are awesome. And then this, whoop, let me get a good color for this one. This is uh, the golden, what's called high flow acrylic. So it's a very uh, wet, Oh, just visited your website. <laughs> Thank you, K&L Resale. Um, she was asking how long have I had the website up for? Oh my goodness, I've had it up for years and years and years, but I just, um, thank you for asking by the way, but I have just uh, updated it so that now when you first go to my website, the first thing you're gonna see is workshops. Uh, information in my blog about on um, how to paint, you know, various types of paintings. There'll be links in, in those articles to my videos that are up on YouTube. Um, and there's also the art supply links there. And if you click on events, you'll be able to see when all of my upcoming workshops are and um, where they're gonna be, the date, the time, uh, and links for when to go into them. So thank you for asking KNL. I do appreciate you. All right, so let's work with this high flow acrylic from Golden. Um, and I'm gonna put it in a little container here. Now I could just take it straight from here. This is some of the uh, wet strength tissue. So then the wet strength tissue has a, um, a rough side and a smooth side. So it's up to you which side you work on, very similar to rice paper. Rice paper also has a rough side and a smooth side. So you just get to know um, what you prefer. <laughs> so for mark making, I could go straight from here. Let me just make it so that it doesn't flow out too much. And then I can actually just make marks right on the tissue like this. But of course, I'm gonna wanna take a brush and come back in here and refine those. These are acrylic brushes. That means they're brushes that are made for acrylic. If you live in Canada, um, this is the Pebio brand. You can see right there. And so I believe Pebio sells the brushes in Canada, but not in the United States. Um, but any brush that has the, that says that it's for acrylic and has this nice, what's called a golden tacklon tip to it. Mm, those are my favorite kind. So here, I'm just making marks. And what I like is when you do a mark making session, it's very relaxing. You don't have to think too much <laughs> because what you're doing is you're just creating marks that you're going to use later in various places in your collage 
and you really don't have to do anything um, in particular. <laughs> you can be just as messy as you want to be like that. Or here, look, I'm taking a little bit of the extra that was on there. Or you can be more deliberate. So one of the shapes that I like is donuts. Um, so I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to make donuts. And the fact that I'm doing it with my own hand and not buying a printed paper, of course, this there's no copyright on this. I don't have to worry. Uh oh, if I use it in a piece of my artwork, what if somebody comes back and says, hey, that's mine, you know, that's my art. What are you doing <laughs> using it in your art? Um, so when you do your own, uh, when you make your own papers like this, it works out perfectly for you to then be able to tear this up and use it in your own artwork. Now, I did mention that this high flow acrylic is, um, because it's acrylic paint, it is permanent when it's dry, Woohoo! which means that it will work perfectly for me to use my mediums, in this case, like a Bindex medium from Pebio or a gel medium, um, in order to glue it down onto the artworks. And the color, once it's dry, will not lift back up. That's the important thing that you want. And that, trust me, there are many different kinds of inks, acrylic inks, that you can uh, use that will dry and be permanent so that that way you don't have to worry here i'm going to go back because it looks like uh, my brush was a little bit dry there and i want heavier donuts i love the circle shapes the other shape that i really like is to do squares oh thank you knl resale she said that she shared the live stream i do appreciate it thank you thank you another shape that i like a lot is um well you see there this what will happen is as you see other people doing doodles, you'll start to go, oh, I like that. And then, as I said, this is just paper that is going to be used in my collages. So you don't, don't think, just have fun when you're creating them. Okay, let's, now this is beginning to get a little bit, it's, I'm almost finished, it's getting dry. So what am I gonna do? I have two different types of sprayers here on the table. I have a fine mist sprayer and then I have my heavier sprayer. So the fine mist sprayer is what I'm gonna use right here just to give it a little spray and loosen it up. Okay, so that loosens it back up, yay, perfect. This is just a little um, uh, ceramic container that I got from my uh, local church thrift shop. <laughs> you don't have to pay a lot for your art supplies, y'all. Really, you don't. Okay, almost done with this one. So I like this color. This is a very neutral color. This one happens to be called um, transparent red iron oxide. And I like it because it's very warm and it kind of will go uh, with a lot of things, your browns and your reds, like, like a brown red. Okay, nice. That's it for that page. Now, what you're going to notice is it's going through. So you see that? That's why I was doing it on top of this, um, this piece of um, palette paper. Okay. Another way that you can do it is just do it on top of wax paper. Let me see, where's my wax paper? That's actually how I'm going to uh, transfer it from right here. I just use a roll of wax paper like this and uh, you can just put it right on there. Let's see what size is this, perfect. All right, we'll just take that. We'll put it up on here. And that we're just going to set it aside and let it dry. We can use it later when we do our collage, when I show you how to do that. Okay, um, now here what I want to do is just spray it down a little bit and dry it off. Unless you don't care about bleed through, bleed through is, is good too. <laughs> it really is. You don't have to worry. All right, so let's just clear that off a little bit. And we'll do another piece here. What I've done is I've taken the um, I've taken the tissue. 
So this tissue paper, let me see if it says what size it is. No, it just says 10 sheets. But when you open it out, um, can you do it on top of another piece of tissue paper and do that a few times and get another piece of art? Excellent question, k &L Resale. The answer is yes, absolutely. The only thing you have to be careful of is you need to be using a heavier um, tissue like this. That's This one in particular is the wet strength tissue because you need to be able to pull them apart without them disintegrating um, or attaching to each other. And you're gonna have to pull it apart before it dries because acrylic paint acts like a glue if you weren't aware of that. Acrylic paint will glue things down. Even acrylic paint colors as well as the plain acrylic paint medium with no color. It looks white here, but it dries clear. That's uh, the wet acrylic medium. And um, what will happen is if you have a couple of stacks of paper and you're letting it bleed through, you better separate it while they're still wet because once they're dry, they're gonna be glued together. <laughs> okay, so what I was saying is that, uh, ha, right? So what I was saying, this, when you open it all out, it's two parts, a top and a bottom, and then each part has, um, can be cut into four sheets. And that's what this is. It's 11 inches this way by seven inches this way. Um, and so that's the way for you. I like to work on it this way, but when I'm making large sheets, then I'll just leave the whole thing together and I'll show you how I deal with those uh, in the not too distant future. Hold on, hold on. And I'll be showing you that in a few minutes. Um, okay, so let's do something else where we're gonna use some metallic. Oh, look at these inks, the metallics. This is a Liquitex brand acrylic ink and look at that gold, wow. Now also here, the FNW, is Daler Rowney. They also have these beautiful um, iridescent inks. Let's, let's get some of these going. So this is a flat sheet. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna flood it with some of these inks. Actually, you know what? Let me get my piece of wax paper because it's gonna be a little harder to lift it off here after I do this. So we'll have a piece of wax paper underneath there. All right, um, and that'll just make it easier for me to lift it off, right? And um, so this is, there are two ways that you can flood your um, wet strength tissue with paint. You can do it flat like this, or you can crinkle it. Most of mine are crinkled like this, just because I like the play of the paint swirling around on the crinkled paper. And we're gonna do that after this one. So the first one, it was just your more traditional painting it with a brush. Oh, and by the way, I need to clean this brush off like right away <laughs> because if I don't, you know what's gonna happen? Ah, all that acrylic is gonna dry on my brush and that's a no-no. Now, if it happens, which you know, of course it's happened to all of us, even the best uh, artists it happens to, um, there's a product called Murphy Oil Soap that you may be familiar with. You just get it in the grocery store and uh, again, Murphy oil soap. So if you uh, leave your paintbrush and you get caked acrylic in the end of the paintbrush, then soak it overnight. Usually I'll do it one or two days, I'll soak it with the bristles in your Murphy oil soap. And, um, and then afterwards you can agitate it and the paint will come off. Another way is to use a, um, rubbing alcohol because rubbing alcohol is the solvent for acrylic, um, acrylic paints. But it depends on the brush. You do that too many times and you're gonna ruin your brushes. So my favorite is to use the Murphy oil soap and uh, they, you have to work it a little bit afterwards but it will come out. So let's go ahead and get the paint out of here as well, otherwise, uh, I would have to spray it with acrylic. So that's like, for instance, here in the um, ceramic, if it did get hard in there and the color stuck, um, then what I would do is I would just spray it with uh, the, um, sorry, I would spray it with the rubbing alcohol and then it will 
uh, allow me, let it soak for a little bit, and then it'll allow you to remove it. Um, you can try that with clothes too, because I've had a lot of people say, what do I do? I got it on my clothes. And I'm like, well, if the clothes will take rubbing alcohol, then you soak it in rubbing alcohol, and then you put soap on it and you agitate it and see if you can get it to come out. So um, that is the trick there with acrylics. Okay, so that got most of it out of there. Yay. You kind of have to clean as you go, because if you don't, <laughs> you're going to end up with all kinds of acrylic paint uh, layered and stuck in there, which is not always a bad thing. All right, so now we want paint to flow. So now I'm going to squirt it with my big squirter and get the paint all over the place. There's a little bit of wrinkling already just naturally from it being wet. Now we can take these paints and when we drip them on there, oh, oh it looks like I haven't uh, mixed this one up well enough because you can see some of the pigment coming out right there in clumps. Okay, so that is the blue. And you can either use a brush to move it around. This is the large size brush here. You can move it a little bit like that. Or you can squirt it with water and tip it in order to get the color to move around. There we go. Any suggestions to remove rust spots from fabric and canvas? Oh, good question. Uh, stay home to shop. Let me think about that for a minute because um, normally I love rust spots on fabric because then I just work around it and create a painting. <laughs> you know, do something to paint around it. I'm not aware of how to remove rust spots from fabric um, or canvas. No. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Now, what you're going to notice is this is much thicker than the paint that we just took out of the bottle here, this F&W acrylic ink. This is the F&W pearlescent liquid acrylic. And what you're going to notice is it's a lot thicker. And that's just because it has um, mica in it. Okay. <laughs> and so that's why it's not spreading the way the other one did. Oh, if I want to get really crazy, I can just pour some out. Why not? Now, one of the things that you need to be aware of with acrylic ink is you want to try not to leave ink on the edge here um, when you close it, because otherwise what happens, it acts like a glue and it makes it hard for you to be able to get the lid back off later. So it's just take that extra second and wipe that edge off and then you're more likely to be able to open it later. Now here, I could move it around with my brush, but let's spray it a little bit with the water. Oh, look at that. Yes. See how it's starting to run? Yeah. Beautiful. That is really pretty. And so what we're trying to do here is just get really random designs and paper going. Okay. I'm going to want a little bit more bold blue in there. So rather than using the uh, F&W ink, like this one was a very light blue you see there, I'm going to get a darker blue from my uh, golden. So let's look. hold on just a second. Let me find a nice like more. Here's something called cerulean blue hue. All right. Now, if your color says hue, that means that it's not the actual cerulean blue. Some colors like cerulean blue and others, um, the original pigments that were used to create those colors can be toxic. And we don't wanna work with toxic products in uh, as much as possible in the art studio. So what paint manufacturers have done is they've taken those colors that um, people love so much, like for instance, the cadmiums and the chromiums, and they will turn, they'll create a paint that they call a hue. So what that means is that's the color cerulean blue, but it doesn't necessarily have the toxicity that original back in the day, acrylian, uh, the cerulean blue would have. Okay, so let's see. Yes. Woo, that's so fun. There we go. You'll see with these, I like to clean off the top here when I'm done, uh, because otherwise you end up with like some of these little tails and things. 
that I don't want to have get in my paint later. I guess I didn't clean it the last time. Ha! Okay, so let's go back here and do that again. And I might need to spray it a little bit more to move it around. Now, when it's really wet like this, there's another trick you can do to get a really cool um, look to it. Oh, you know what? And I'm losing some of that uh, iridescence. So let me just do, ooh, look at the colors when it comes together. What I love about making these papers is it's, there's, you get things that are unexpected. <laughs> and that, isn't that the idea? I mean, for me, the idea is to um, do something that is um, out of the box and you don't have control over, you know? Oftentimes when you're painting, like when I show you how to paint using a, an outliner and then you're creating the lines and then you're painting within those lines, that's one way of, uh, that. to me, that's more tight. But this is a much looser way of painting that I really enjoy. Okay, there's a bubble right here. So I'm just gonna pop the bubble. Uh, and what I'm gonna do at this point is I want a little bit of gold in there. I don't know why that's the thing. You surround yourself with all your beautiful paint colors and then you just start playing, right? <laughs> so here again, the gold is thick because it has mica in it. So we're gonna use our, in this case, I'm gonna use my brush and I'm just gonna brush the gold around a little bit. Sometimes you don't even see, like for instance, the gold here kind of disappears, but sometimes as it dries, it's, um, what it does is it clarifies. And then that way you end up seeing it, flashes of it in different places. Um, okay, so now to get this really interesting look, do you see the little dots in here? That is because I put salt on it. So that is actually a, um, hey, what is that? Welcome in. That is actually a watercolor technique um, when you have sopping wet paints like this, you can put salt on it and you want the coarse crystals and then you leave it. And as it dries, it, it makes these little spots on there, which are really cool. So let me uh, go ahead and take some of this. So you see how coarse it is there. I just want to put that around. Usually I will wait for it to be not quite so sopping wet. I like it to be wet, but not uh, not quite this sopping, but that's okay. For right now, we need to get on with it, right? <laughs> you can already start to see some of the paint puddle and pool around where the salt is. And that's what gives you those really neat spots right there. Okay, so we are going to take this. Mm, let me see, where am I gonna put that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious because it's quite wet let me um okay i know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take one of the the flippy flippy page books that i had here and i'm gonna put it on top and where did i put that ah, sorry about that hold on just a minute here it is on the floor so what i'm gonna do to give it uh some stiffness here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to have to set it off to the side. Sorry about that. You can't see it, but I'm going to lift this up. And, oh, look, it actually went through the wax paper. Wow. That's okay. It'll create a design on this paper and then I can go from there, right? There we go. So um, why don't we just go with the flow here with the color that's on there. Now, this is the other technique to get it to really flow a lot and give you all the crinkles, is you're gonna take your paper first and you're gonna crinkle it up like that. Get it good and crinkled. And then you smooth it out, smooth it back out like it is. And you see how nice and crinkled it is? Yeah, that's usually what I do. I've done tons and tons and tons of these papers and I usually crinkle it first. So you have beautiful texture on the paper already as it is. So now let's just put it down here and pick up whatever color was on there already. Oh yeah, I'm getting dirty. That means we're having fun in the studio, right? <laughs> we're getting dirty. All right, there we go. 
you can already see as you're looking here that um, the fact that the paper was crinkled gives you a really cool um, different kind of design the way it's picking it up and not picking it up. All right, I'm just going to do this and get up some of that. Now here, I need to clean this brush off, don't I? Um, when I clean my brushes off, I dip it in water, but I don't swish it. I come back to my paper towel and I try to get as much color off on the paper towel as possible. Actually, that's some good color there, isn't it? Hey, hold on. Let's just do this. Maybe I can just put the color right on here. What am I doing? Don't waste color, right? <laughs> Okay, there we go. And this is all crinkly. Hey, I have some color on there. Will it, will that color go down on there? Not really. It's being held on to by that uh, paper towel. Okay, let me get some other colors here going. And you can also take your um, acrylic inks, like for instance, these, um, these golden high flow and you can put them in a little spray bottle and then you can create your own spray inks and spray inks work great with this technique right here okay let's see if this one is open yet uh, the first time that you open these they're sealed so let's pull that seal off oh look there's some paint there let's just distribute the paint on there because i hate to waste any paint at all there we go so now this is ready, but I could take a little bit of this and pour it into uh, one of these kind of spray bottles with a little bit of water and then ch -ch 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 spray that right on there as opposed to uh, using a brush to put it on. Okay, let's put just a little bit more here. Ah! And remember, I'm going to wipe off that tip before I put it away. Hey, Blaze0331, welcome in, welcome in. There we go. And now I'm going to do this. And I love the way it spreads when you spray the water on, right? Oh, so pretty. And then, of course, because this is crinkly paper, it's not going to travel the same way the last one did. Let's see, I want to move that a little bit more. Oh yeah, nice. I'm feeling like I need a little bit more of the, um, this kind of aqua color in there, don't I? So let me, now what if you have a paint like this, which is more of a, um, it's, some might call it a fluid acrylic, but it's thicker. I don't know if you can see that, but it's thicker. So what I'm gonna do with that is I wanna get it a little juicy, right? We want to put a little bit of water in there. There's also something called airbrush medium. I don't know if you're well aware of that, but acrylic paints, like I said, have lots of different mediums to them. And there's a type of medium called an airbrush medium. And it's so cool because it's very watery. And you can, um, sometimes it's better to use airbrush medium than to use water um, because airbrush medium will assure that the paint sticks. So if you're having trouble with the paint flaking off of a surface, um, that means there's too much water in it. There's not enough adhesion ability of the paint. So you want to be sure that instead of using water, you use airbrush medium, which has, it's a fluid, very fluid type of acrylic. And then that will help you to be sure that the paint sticks to your surface. All right. Now, I'm, instead of holding this like you would hold a pencil, I'm going to hold it like this. That's a, an artist grip. And let's just add some of this in there and see what happens. Woo. I've added some water to it already here so that it flows. And you might notice that this paint is um, more opaque. It has sort of a white base to it. Okay, let's well, get crazy and put some in there. Okay. Nice. And then I'm going to come in with, now I'm going to employ my uh, brush holder at this point, because otherwise this brush is going to roll all over the place. I'm putting it in my brush holder and uh, let's do some of this. And then I want to put a little bit more of that blue in there. 
I, mean, I don't have to. I could have stopped here, but I'm thinking I want a little bit more of that blue. So that was some of the high flow. Let's just put a little bit more of that in there. Oh, looky there. Okay, you see how addictive and fun this is? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see. Yes, we are clean. And then I'm going to spray just a little bit more water. Use the magic of water to make it run. Run all over the place. There we go. And then because of the crinkles, it's, it's having to move in unusual ways. There we go. So I would more or less leave that. Let's see if I can. No, you see, that's the problem. Ah, <laughs> you keep wanting to do more and do more. I'm covering over the little white sections so that I've got it all painted. All right, so now I'm going to, it's got the crinkle, but then I'm also going to put the salt on it because I just love the look of the pooled uh, paint from the salt. So there we go again. This is coarse. So this is combining, crunching it, and then using the different paints and then spraying it and then putting salt on it. So that will come out looking beautiful once it's dry. There we go. Yes, I go through lots of salt when I'm doing the big pieces. Okay, so that's that one. Now I'm going to show you one more surface that I work on. And oh, the, the trouble you have when you do these is finding places to put them. So <laughs> it's definitely helpful if you set up a spare table and then as you're making them, you put them over on your spare table <laughs> because they really need a flat surface in order to sit on. Now, this is a piece of foam board. And what I've done is I've covered the foam board with a textured uh, trash bag. So you see the texture there in the trash bag? That's one of those trash bags that um, when you use it, uh, expands, right? It's an expanding trash bag. Oh, now I'm gonna have to find space. Let's see if we can make this work. Um, and so what I do is I like to use this crinkled surface underneath because that helps even more. Let me see if I can get this in here. So normally I'll have a much larger, like a half of one of these wide sheets will fit on this piece of foam core. This is the same kind of foam core that you just get either at the grocery store for um, kids projects for school or at uh, a, a drugstore, um, a dollar store, that kind of place, okay? So don't, don't go with anything expensive. You don't need anything expensive. You could actually just use a piece of wood if you have a piece of wood laying around, um, but you're covering it. And then if you look on the back here, I taped it. You see the tape, the blue painter's tape, so that it's not too loose, but it has the crinkle on the surface of it. So now I'm gonna do a combination of crinkle the paper and then put it on a crinkled surface as well so that when it dries then it'll have a double whammy of the paper's already been crinkled plus the surface behind it is crinkled as well so let's just take this paint that's already in here and spray it and drip it on there oh look at that color y'all Woo, I love it. Let's do something with silver because, you know, a lot of times I'm using gold, but I also, I enjoy using silver as well. So let's uh, get a little bit more of this. This is the F&W, but on my website, you can see some of the different brands of uh, these fluid acrylics and the acrylic inks to choose from. Okay. I really like this uh, combination of kind of the aqua blue, the baby blue, and the silver. Yeah, I think that'll come out nicely. Okay, and let's take a little bit more of this here. So there's really no waste. You're just going to do it until your paper's gone and you're uh, just going to use all the paint you have there. Okay. Oh, there's the silver coming out. Nice. I like this. 
I like that color. Very aqua. A lot of what I do as um, I have a whole series of paintings called sea song paintings. So they're very, uh, lots of blue in them. <laughs> now I want to put a little more silver in there because I can see little bits of the silver, but I just want more silver. More, more and more. There we go. Oh, one of my doggies came in to visit. Hey, Lacey. What's up, baby? She's looking at me. Mama, what are you doing? Oh, look at me. I'm getting paint everywhere. Okay, hold on. Paper towel. I should always have a paper towel in hand. Um, these are Viva paper towels. I think I've mentioned it to you if you've watched my courses before. Viva paper towels, they have uh, several different types of Viva, but this is the cloth-like surface of the Viva. So there's some texture on this side, but this side is more smooth like a cloth. And that is what I like to use in the studio because then if I'm picking something up, uh, paint-wise, it's acting more like a cloth than it is acting like a um, paper towel that has uh, texture to it. Unless texture is what you're looking for. But especially when I'm doing watercolor, most of the time I don't want that extra texture. Oh, there we go. I think a little more silver, right? I just love lots of metallic. What can I tell you? Right, there we go. You can do it. All right. There is the, this was the Liquitex iridescent silver. All right. So now we've got good silver on there. And what's the next thing I'm going to do? Oh, of course, I'm going to put some salt on it, but let me uh, clean out my brush with color first. Good studio practice, get water on it, get more color out. You want to try to get as much color out as possible before you put it in the water because this water goes down the sink, right? And that goes out into our aquifer, um, our, that's our water table. And we want as little acrylic, uh, fluid acrylic um, in suspension paint material in our water supply as possible, okay? So I get most of the paint out before I drop the brush in there. Actually, when I do this with the brush, there's a lot more color that just came out of there, but I try to get as much out ah, as possible before, um, before going into the water. Okay, here we go. Salt, 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 salt. And that's how we're gonna get those beautiful papers. I'm noticing some of this salt bunched up, so I'm just going to go through here, separate it a little bit. Ah, nothing like getting paint all over your hands, just like when you're a kid, right? It's so much fun. Okay, so that is the last one of the techniques that I'm going to show you for how to make your own beautiful papers that you can use in collage. It's really fun. Uh, you need a few items. If you do have paints, craft paints like this, you can either use airbrush medium or you can use water and put them in a container and uh, make them fluid and then use them in a similar fashion. And definitely go get yourself some of this coarse sea salt. Oy. It, uh, that is so much fun. That's a really fun uh, way to get different um, designs. Look, see this one's beginning to dry there look at that like the magenta went together with the blue and created some purples and it wasn't like that when we first did it isn't that fun and then let's see what this other one is doing over here this was the um, green and blue here and we've got some nice teal going there and we'll see some of this gold pop out once it's all the way dry oh yes okay so what i'm going to do here is this is a piece of, remember I told you this is palette paper. So I'm gonna go in here with a palette knife. Let me see, is that one sheet or more than one sheet? Let's get that started, okay. So I'm just gonna go in with a palette knife and I'm gonna pull this palette paper off of here. You see there? And we'll do this here. Nice, okay. So notice the palette paper did not go through, whereas the um, wax paper did go through, right? In terms of the paint soaking in. 
So that's why I generally, I have many pads of um, palette paper going at one time. <laughs> All right, so the fun thing is now we have several papers on here and I can take that and put it off to the side and uh, let those dry. Let me show you some of the many, 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 many papers I've made using this technique. Oh, here is a big bunch of them. What I do is I put big clips on them and then I hang them in a closet like that. And so here are some of the blues and the greens. There's one that has a bunch of like a coppery gold color on it. This one I thought looks like those uh, moth wings, you know, those kind of moths that are really big and they have that beautiful green, but you see the little spots on there. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna use that for moth wings. This one, there's a lot of the gold there again. Uh, down here, this one, um, I put the green in the background and then I used the um, bottle like this of the gold. Oh, I'm getting paint everywhere. So I used the bottle like this of gold and or bronze and then just made designs all over it. These are the large full size pieces. Here's one that has uh, your magenta, blue, yellow, green. I wanted something a little more fiery there. There's some blue. Here we've got purple and black. More of the green with gold. So you can see it. Once you start making it, you get um, a little crazy. A little crazy with making more and more and more because it's just so fun. Let's see. There's that one. And I'm showing you these to inspire you for the different colors and the way you can use the gold and all in them. Oh yeah. Here's one that still has some salt on it even. <laughs> I didn't brush all the salt off of it yet because after it dries, you brush the salt off. This one has a very landscape look, so it would work very well in a landscape type environment. Um, I love this light blue green. There's a piece of this in the pack which is for the giveaway right here. Palette paper. Those are all on wax paper. Oh, thank you, tiny heart, hardest. <laughs> yeah, they're all on uh, palette paper. I did do, um, when I did this one a little bit earlier, which was using a brush and using the same kind of fluid uh, acrylics, this one, I did on top of the palette paper and then transferred it over to wax paper because it wasn't very wet on the bottom and I could transfer it easily with the wax paper. However, the ones that get really soppy that I just showed you, um, they need to go on top of a piece of palette paper because the palette paper is um, heavy enough that the colors will not go through and that's what it is that you're looking for you don't want the colors going through oops i'm knocking stuff over of course <laughs> all right so now you've made a bunch of your papers the question is what are you going to do with them uh and that is see, see there's a whole bunch of my various colors here so let's do some artwork using the papers and that's the mixed media artwork. This is a sample of a piece that I was working on last night. The reason I, I did it this far is this is almost ready for the final touch, which is using uh, wax crayons on it. And I didn't want to do that until later. So, um, oh, hi there, Sherry Tyson. Nice color combinations. Thank you very much. I see you over there on YouTube and on um, what kind of paper? Excellent question. I think you were asking about these where I was doing the, um, uh, creating my own collage papers with tissue like this. And the trick is what you wanna do, Sherry, is use something called wet strength tissue paper. So here it is, wet strength tissue paper. And that is tissue paper that is designed for you to be able to get it sopping wet like this and it will not tear on you, okay? So you can do wet design type um, types with it and then just let it dry and it'll peel right up off of this 
and be ready to use like these pieces that I have already done and are dry. All right, so I hope that that answers your question. And if you wanna know where to find that um, kind of paper, you can go to my website. So if you go here to dsart.com, you can then click on the menu item that says, um, what does it say? Something links, supply links. And when you do that, then you're able to see um, down a little ways, there'll be like uh, specialty papers. And that's where you can find uh, a link to go get some of that. Plus, if you are on, you've never heard of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, Sherry was like, oh my gosh, I've never heard of that. Exactly. So that's, that's why you attend these kind of uh, workshops, right? And uh, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. So this is the, um, the wet strength tissue paper. Um, if you're over on my whatnot stream after the lesson, then um, you will be able to enter a giveaway to win this large piece of wet strength tissue, as well as the um, some of the papers that I have already colored. So some of my collection here. And that um, the way that you get over to Whatnot is you use the QR code on YouTube toward the top of the screen. You can scan that, or you can go in at, um, into the description of the video and there'll be a link there to pop over to whatnot and join and you'll be brought right into the stream here so that afterwards um you'll be able to participate in the giveaway all right and then also afterwards i'll be showing you some of my new um new artist cards and other items that are art related that i have for sale on whatnot okay so um these Anybody who knows me knows that I grew up loving postage stamps. So these are a whole bunch of international postage stamps. And you can see here, this one, I've already put a postage stamp on it, uh, SAS, which is Scandinavian Airways, and um, some of my own papers, like I just showed you how to make, right? So we just made these. The cool thing is this is already dry, so I can show you how I incorporate it into one of these collages. And um, here... This is paint that I did on black paper. So remember earlier, I showed you the black watercolor paper. You can use either black watercolor paper or black mixed media paper, and you can paint on it with your lighter colors of acrylic paint, more opaque, and then um, incorporate that into your artwork as well. And then this is another piece of my uh, handmade paper there. And this is the black watercolor paper that I was working on. Okay, so these are some uh, papers that I, last night, I went ahead and I put on um, a layer of acrylic paint on them. And I'm going to show you how to do that, but I wanted to show them to you um, dry, because <laughs> these had to dry overnight. <laughs> so these are what we're, we're actually going to work on this larger one here that I showed earlier. Um, and that is where it was bowed a little bit. So I put the gesso on the back to help um, get the opposite in going with the bow. All right. So this is painted with a layer of acrylic. But let me show you what I do to quickly get acrylic paint on there. And also, I like a little texture. So I don't know if you can see that or not in the camera. But yeah, I like my paint to have texture to it. So the way that I get the paint surface to have a little bit of interest by having texture is I use a palette knife to apply the paint uh, instead of applying the paint with a brush. But you absolutely can apply the paint with a brush. And this finished artwork that I have here that was part of the um, thumbnail, actually I brushed that on there. What I do is I keep paper next to me and when I have leftover paint in my brush, I just brush that leftover paint onto these additional pieces of paper. And then that becomes the base for my collages, my next collage and my next collage and my next collage. So <laughs> I call that serendipity paper, the paper that you have next to you. So you can just, you know, whip out some more. As a matter of fact, let me make sure that I have a piece of serendipity paper here for what I'm doing. Uh, let's see here. There it is. I see it. Okay. 
So let me put the tissue away. And this is a canvas board, right? So it's actually a piece of gessoed canvas there. And you can also, believe it or not, buy what's called a canvas pad. And a canvas pad just means that instead of it being attached to a board or attached to stretcher bars, as you typically think of as a canvas, it's actually just the gessoed fabric uh, piece of cotton canvas, but it's in a, um, a pad. <laughs> Usually there are 10 sheets in a canvas pad and it's so convenient. And that's when I'm testing things and just figuring things out, that's what I like to use is I like to use a canvas pad because why? It's a lot easier to store sheets of canvas than it is to store these canvas boards or to store the, um, the, the, can the stretch canvases. Okay, so this, um, I'm gonna show you how I apply paint pretty quickly to something like this, but what I normally do is I'll prepare a bunch of surfaces like I did here. Here are a bunch of surfaces. I did all of these and this one all at the same time last night. Now, depending on your surface, in this case, watercolor paper, in this case, canvas, and your paint, in this case, the, um, here, er, this was the Pebeo paint out of a tube like this. And this was the craft paint from a bottle like this. Depending on your paint and your surface, that will determine how long it takes for the paint to dry. The paint in the bottles like this tends to be a little more chalky and it dries more quickly. The paint in a tube like this tends to be more what I call juicy and it takes longer to dry, just so you know. Um, also, if you're using a palette knife, it takes longer to dry because you're putting on a thicker layer generally. Um, and then if you brush it on instead, you have little control to do a thinner layer and then usually those will dry more quickly. All right, so let's take uh, uh, these and just move them out of the way and I'll show you how I go ahead and put a layer of paint on here. Uh, let's do this color. Now this is a little too bold for me. So I'm gonna just put some of it on there. See how thick it is? That's why it takes so long for it to dry. <laughs> um, now, I don't want it to just be that bold. I want to tone the color down a little bit. So what is the opposite of green? The opposite of green is red. That's how you can tone down your colors. Think about what is the opposite color on the color wheel. So the opposite color of green is red. The opposite color of blue is orange. And the opposite color of... Uh, you know, red is green and yellow is purple. Okay. So this is not red, but oh, let's see, maybe I have a red here. Yeah, I do. All right. Let's see if we can tone that down a little bit by adding this. And then I'm going to add some white. So, um, yes, often I do mix my colors on a palette like this before I put them onto my canvas, but <laughs> there are other times when I like to mix directly on my surface like this, because then you get sort of unexpected, unusual designs and colors. You're kind of living dangerously, right? This is kind of giving me a bit of a gray, meaning that, okay, so what that means is I put too much red in with that green. Let's put some more of that green. Um, the way that you uh, dull down your colors is that you put the opposite, but usually you wanna try to put just a small amount of the opposite color in there. Okay, good. Now that dulled it down, but it's not, um, not quite so gray. Okay, so there we go. Now what I wanna show you is, do you see the texture in there? You see the fact that there's texture. So when I do that, of course, it makes it um, take longer to dry. And, but it's also quicker to put on. So if I'm doing a bunch of surfaces, I use my palette knife and I put on uh, a bunch of surfaces at the same time. Like this, and then I leave them overnight to dry. Like I did with those other ones that I just showed you a minute ago. Okay, so see how that toned that down by putting the uh, pink in with the, or the red in with the green. So 
so the green is not so uh, bold anymore. The reason I did that is because I want color in the background, but I want, of course, my collage that I'm going to put on top of it to play, you know, the major role, the main role. So on um, what I love about using a palette knife to apply my paint is that uh, I can just wipe it with a paper towel to clean it. So I can go from color to color very quickly and easily just by grabbing a beautiful, your pre-made color samples remind me of Mark Rothko. Ah, thank you, uh, Stay Home to Shop. Yeah, I do love Mark Rothko. I have a whole series of pastel paintings that I've done that are um, in the theme of Mark Rothko. And uh, they're not live anywhere for sale yet. I have to pull them out and photograph them and put them up. <laughs> but I have a whole series of those. Um, okay, so that's why I love using a palette knife because see how quick and easy it is to, uh, to clean it off. It's so nice. Now this I'm actually going to set aside and I'm getting paint all over me, which is why I am wearing a, um, <laughs> an apron learn the apron now if i had leftover paint let's say for instance uh i went oh i have a bunch of paint left on the palette knife here because let me pick up a little bit more of it and i'll show you what i do so i have paint left on the palette knife right that's why i have these what i call serendipity papers which is just more paper more paper next to me this is a postcard but it's a size four by six and it's what I use on my greeting cards when I make greeting cards. So now I have extra paint here, right? And I can just come on and this becomes the beginning of another greeting card. There we go, I like that. So I always have extra paper next to me of one sort or another. And then that's how I clean off my palette knife or clean off my brush. Ooh, look, there was a lot more on there than I thought, right? I like when the edges are really um, organic like that. Like, not everything doesn't have to be perfect. It can be what I call perfectly imperfect. There you go. Brilliant idea. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Stay Home to Shop. Oh, okay. So, again, that's cleaning off the palette knife. And now I've got a piece of paper that's ready for me to make a greeting card. Let me show you an example of a greeting card that's made like that, like this. So this is four by six paper, and this is four by six paper. And I created a collage on it and it becomes a greeting card. Right, just like that. So no waste. Uh, let's go ahead and use a paper towel I do use lots of paper towels, that's for sure. And let's take this, see, clean quickly, just like that. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and allow that to dry. Let's see, uh, here's that problem I have of where can I put it, but it's not gonna get everything else dirty. <laughs> okay, I think I see where I can put it. Hold on a second. I'm going to put it on top of the plastic here of my um, wet strength tissue. I think there we go. And then move it aside. All right, hold on. Move a few things here. There we go. Okay. So that's safely set aside. Now, let's use some of the handmade paper here, as well as, of course, we're gonna use postage stamps and other papers. And we're gonna go on to this piece right here. So um, what I do is I generally will put one color in the background, kind of like these little, little cards, and this one, one color in the background like that, and then I'll build my collage on top of it. And then I can come in with more colors Hi there, uh, Sharp Sellers and C. I come back in with more colors. So here with a little bit of yellow, a little bit of this uh, shimmer blue, a little bit of white, and you can paint on top of the collage afterwards. Um, so let's see, the first thing that I like to do is I like to get uh, some of this 
interesting. Now this is dry because it was from last night. So I audition various papers on here as well as I will audition various uh, postage stamps. So that's a nice postage stamp, has an interesting background, but maybe, maybe this one will look better. What's the most creative, unexpected use of postage stamps and artwork that you've seen? Uh, good question. Um, well, what I've done that was kind of unexpected with postage stamps is I covered a, a surface of paper and then I did a light wash of paint over top of it. So you could still kind of see the postage stamps through, but not feature the postage stamps. They were more in the background. And then I uh, did a painting on top of it. <laughs> so that was kind of different. Um, all right. So you see how that really looks nice on that background. Okay. So I think that's the stamp we're going to use for that. And um, so that, and oftentimes I'll use multiple stamps. So um, I had mentioned earlier that if you're on whatnot, you can go to the, the buy it now and take a look at um, what I have available for sale. And one of the things I have available for sale is postage stamp packs. Ah, Sherry said that she loved the marbled effect. I guess when I was using the, um, the palette knife, <laughs> <laughs> to um, kind of mix the colors together right on the surface. Okay, so you can purchase on WhatNot a, um, a stamp pack, and it's going to be uh, domestic and international, lots of international stamps. It's 20 or more. Usually it's more than 20. Um, and I have a whole box like this full. So what I do is I sit here and I audition various postage stamps. So I might do a collection like that where I might do two where they overlap each other. Oh, okay. From a design standpoint, this stamp is a bit of a conundrum. And the reason is the airplane is facing this way and the gentleman's head is facing that way. Um, so uh, that makes me nuts because you want somebody's um, eye to travel around your artwork and stay in the artwork and not go off of the artwork. So his face is looking this way, which means I would want to put the stamp over here. Right, so we're talking about design concept and um, the airplanes facing over there. Now, the first thing you probably notice when you see the stamp is the man's face. And uh, therefore, I'm going to put it to the right side, even though he's kind of looking to the left. Now, this one, what do we have? We have a young lady from the Olympics 1968 postage stamp from Chad. And um, she is kind of facing that way, isn't she? So because she's facing that way, she would need to be over on this side, which means these two should not go together. Because I'm either going to have now another design, another design element here. Let me see. How am I going to show this to you? Hold on just a second. Let me take a couple of these. Okay. So I'm, right now I'm going to use the rule of thirds. So you're going to break your surface into thirds. All right. This way. And then you know, one third this way and one third this way. Right. So visually um, in your mind's eye, you're going to break this into thirds like that. And then you want your points of interest to be at the intersections of those thirds. All right. So um, most of the time I will put, for instance, if I'm using this corner on top as my primary focus of interest, then this corner over here diagonal becomes becomes my secondary point of interest. Okay. That's how you keep balance in your artwork uh, is by oh, that's one way. <laughs> there are many ways, but that is one way. And uh, that's the technique that I'm going to use right now. Okay. Um, so that's called the rule of thirds. And um, you can see here, I have lots of different postage stamps in my box. And I just rifle through it and I find stamps that I want to audition for a particular work. This is literally what I do. As I sit here, oh, Here's some of the same, you know, similar colors, and they're looking that direction. So I've got her looking that direction, and I've got them looking that direction, right? So that brings people into the artwork. Now, I can even 
let's say I want it to be all about women. Why not? So we've got a woman there, a woman there, and here's another woman. Where am I going to put her? I can either keep a cluster up here or what did I say? She's looking that way. And this is the second focal point if I have my main focal point up here. Okay. So um, I can use her down here and I can use these and overlap just a little bit like that up there. Ta -ta -da. Okay. So I'm going to put three postage stamps on this one. And uh, remember, if you want to get your own pack of exotic postage stamps, then um, all you have to do is on whatnot, go to the buy it now, and then go into, um, what is it? If you type in the word supplies, supplies, you will find uh, that you can purchase a stamp pack, a postage stamp pack. All right. So um, that's. I start like this, right? I pick out my, uh, sort of my focals. A second, I hear that my, uh, my headset's just, uh, finished off. Let me know if the fan is too loud. I think, uh, we can tolerate it. Okay. So the, um, now I want to put some papers in the background, right? Let's look at paper that I've made. So some of the handmade papers here. You want to find something that's appropriate. Oh, you know what I like? I like the fact that this is like a blue green and this is red, isn't it? So what's opposite on the color wheel? Hold on, I have a color wheel right here, which I keep in the studio. And so the opposite of red, we have red here. The opposite of red is green, right? Here, blue green. What's the opposite of blue green is red orange. So I want to be in that kind of red orange um, area to offset the color that's in the background. So let's take this one and we'll just tear it like that. That's a beautiful thing about this tissue. And then I like this, these organic edges, maybe do like this. So this is what I call the auditioning phase where you're auditioning uh, different pieces of paper for your collage. Ooh, I like that. I like where that's going because the blue in the background here is being picked up by the blue in her shirt, which may be hard for you to see. Let me bring it up closer and maybe you can see it that way. Right? right? Now you can see she has blue in her shirt and there's a little bit of blue on that red uh, paper in the background there. Ooh, nice. Okay. And then uh, since we've got the red going, hmm, let's see, I've got a little bit of this you see how um, <laughs> there was some rustiness on my paper here. So let's, I like the fact that her hair has that kind of rust color in it. So how do I do this one? Audition it like that. There we go. So that's kind of fun, right? Nope, nope. I want to do that. I like it to sometimes go off off the page, off of the paper there so that it anchors it to the painting in the background. Okay, so that's some of those papers. There are, you know, of course, many different types of papers that you can use with this. Um, now, these are mulberry papers. See the little fibers in that paper? Yeah, so, um, and there like that. These come, you get a, a handful of these also in the paper pack when you buy a paper pack from me. Uh, the scrap paper pack. So let's go ahead and audition a little bit of this paper here because I like this color. It's a little bit darker than the background, which is awesome. There. And we're just at it now. Don't think too hard at this stage because um, we're actually going to be painting on top. Nothing is permanent. Even if you glue it down onto there, you can still change things later. So I really like these uh, donuts. Do I want donuts or waves? What do y'all think? Donuts or waves? I'm going to tear a piece off of this and we're going to put either donuts or waves in here. I'm waiting for a comment. I just want to see if anybody has a preference there. <laughs> if not, all right. I don't see any preferences coming. Let's just tear some off the bottom here. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that underneath the edge there. And so now I've got paper that I made, paper that I made, paper that I made. All right. And that's helping to um, enhance what I have on here of other uh, elements. Like, for instance, music. Where's my music? I have a whole packet of papers, which now I have to find, that um, includes music in it. And where did the music come from? It came from Salmon's Girl. Well, I'm not sure if Salmon's Girl is in the, uh, in the chat right now, but thank you, Salmon's Girl, for that. Ooh, you know what? Here. Let's, what I'm doing is I'm looking in here, my bins, actually, maybe some marbled paper. Let's see, maybe there's a piece of marbled paper. So I hand marble paper, and uh, there's probably a piece of hand marbled paper right here. Yes, some hand marbled paper. So let's see if one of those will work on here. Right, so these are marbled. And there's a little bit of sort of the pink and the green in there. Hmm. If I put that, nope, yes, like that. Okay, this way the papers are touching each other. And what that does is it, it this is your focal point and it makes somebody's eye go this way around the painting. You wanna keep somebody in your painting as opposed to going off the painting. I mean, that's one technique anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's good. I think that's good. We will start with that. So, oh, here was the music. So here's some of the music that I have as I uh, get, ooh, and here's some of my paper that has little uh, writing on it. So I gather papers, not only my own papers, but all of these other exotic papers and just keep them in these bins and they are ready for me when I'm ready. Let's do this. And then maybe we'll put that one right there. Nope, that's too heavy, quote unquote. Okay, better, more better. All right, so now I'm gonna put all of these little bitty bits away. So don't throw your bits of paper away, y'all. Put them in containers and hang on to them. <laughs> okay, so this has a little more um, continuity to it. I'm just going to move these aside for a moment. Now, how do we attach these papers that we have auditioned? How do we get them stuck down? What I do is I use a, uh, a gel medium acrylic. So you're looking for something that's an acrylic gel medium. There are many different forms. This happens to be a, um, a gel, so it has some body to it. There's also uh, something called a fluid medium. So this is matte medium, but it's fluid like that. So you can use that as well. I find this to me is almost too wet. It depends on what papers I'm using, whether it works or not. If I have heavier papers, like for instance, these postage stamps, I find sometimes the fluid medium doesn't glue it down onto the surface hard enough for me. Um, now we're gonna go back to using a palette knife. So notice there are different sizes to the tops of your palette knives. So I'm gonna start out with the big one and then I'm gonna move to the smaller one. And I'm gonna move this down here so that I can take some of this gel medium and, uh, oh, you know what? I'm gonna start actually with this called Bindex. So I really like when it comes in a jar like this or a jar like this, okay, love that. Now this being a fluid medium, you're gonna use a brush with it. What I like about using um, your mediums that come in a jar like this is, check this out. <laughs> it goes beautifully on a palette knife like that. Okay, so now I sort of have to disassemble my artwork here. And that means I'm gonna pull some things off to the side like that, sort of where they're going to go. 
and I have to work from the back to the front, right? So what is it that is all the way in the back? This one's all the way in the back and this one's all the way in the back, right? So I can either um, pull it off and get the back, put my um, medium on the back like this and then put it down. Another thing that I like to do, see here, I always end up with paint all over my hands. Notice I don't have any rings on right now because otherwise I end up with <laughs> paint and acrylic medium all in my rings. Okay. So this is a large enough piece that I could hold it in my hand, but I'll show you in a second what I do with some of the other ones. So this one we're going to put right here, right? So what I like about the using the palette knife is you see how I'm able to smooth it. Don't worry if you see white right now of this medium when it dries, that medium will be clear. So it's not going to uh, hurt. That white's not going to stay. Okay, then we have this little bit right here. Now I can also do this. I can put it directly on the surface like this and then just lay this on top of it that. Notice I sort of go from the middle out to the edges to try to get the bubbles out. Okay. Easy peasy, right? Now if I wanted to put this piece down, another thing that I do is I will take those inserts that you get from the, uh, you know, in your mailbox, right? So I'll take one of those. And I will flip this over onto the back. Then I will use this and here. So then I'll do this and just get my medium all over the back of it like this. The nice thing about having a palette knife is it's easy to lift it up like that. And then I can put this right here. Like that. Okay. Now, if I were using a brush, I would just be brushing uh, to put it down as, as opposed to using the palette knife. Now, this one just tore just a little bit, but I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter uh, because paint and other things are going to go on top of there. So this is just your preliminary layers. Let's do this here. If you um, have ever watched Bob Burridge on YouTube, oh my gosh, he just takes his surface and he just coats it with a whole bunch of uh, medium and then puts his his collage papers down that way. Oh, you know what? I have to move this one over just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. And then this one right here is going to go on top of that, like this. So I could be doing exactly the same thing, but with a brush. So don't be intimidated by the palette knife if you're not used to using a palette knife. Do not worry. Okay, there we go. That's some of my handmade paper. Okay. Now, one of the things, this handmade paper has gold on it. So when you're working with metallics, if you want the metallic to stay bright and shimmery, you want to be sure that you're using a gloss medium. So this is a gloss medium. Do you see that there? But I also have the same thing. This is the larger size in a matte medium. So if I were working with these other papers, I could stick with the matte medium. But as soon as I'm going to go over top of gold, I need something that has a gloss finish to it to go over top of that. So you don't lose the beautiful um, shimmer of the metallics. OK. All right. So let's take this. Another thing you can do is right on your palette right here. You can get a little bit of this on here. And then this is one of the postage stamps. So I'm putting it down on there like that. Coating the back of it on the palette paper. And then there she goes right there. 
Nice. Portrait of a young woman, it's a, a young lady. 1505 is that image. So there you go there. And then up here, remember this one was underneath and then we're going to overlap just a tiny bit right there like that. So this one has to go first. So I'm gonna put that also down here on the palette. And we're gonna get the whole back of it covered and then up it comes. We're gonna put her right here. There we go. Notice that I'm uh, going over top of edges. So I don't want this edge to be at the same level as this edge. And I don't want this edge to be at the same level of either one of these. That's how you're going to develop interest and keep somebody's eye moving through your painting. Okay. Now, um, this is the next one right here. Take a little bit of the medium. And put it on the back right there. Oh, make sure it's all covered and then bring it here. And we want to overlap that slightly and do that. Okay, so now we've got a uh, mixed media piece coming, coming together, coming together, coming together. Um, let me make sure that I uh, point out to you when you're using rice paper or tissue paper like this, and you're making a design on it like we did here, you'll notice that when you glue it down, this gel medium helps to uh, make that paper a little bit translucent so that if there was something else, writing or an image underneath that, it would actually show through that a little bit. Um, you would be able to see it. All right, so that is doing the collage layer now, normally, oh, no, one more thing. That's the music. But instead of using the bindex, let me show you what I do here if I have um, this. Now, right around here, do you see how clear that is? That's where it's dry and it dried clear. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put, that's what the gel looks like. The gel, you see how it has a peak there? It's a little thicker. It's this paint, but without any pigment in it. It's just the acrylic medium. So here's the music. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of the gel like this and put it on the back of the music piece. Okay, lift it up with the palette knife. Whoop, there we go. And put it right here. Make sure it's somewhat level. <laughs> It helps before you completely push it down if you make sure that your lines, if there are any, are on um, parallel with the edges. Okay, Whew. there we go. So that's all of the collage pieces. Now, once you've got all your collage pieces on there, well, let's go ahead and clean this off, this palette knife. And you see why I use a palette knife instead of a brush? Because it's so much easier to clean. Ah, uh, okay, here we go. Just like that. That is clean. Now, if there's a residue that's left on there and it dries, say, then what I do is I take another palette knife and once it's dry, I just get it off of there with the edge of another palette knife. And that's how I keep my palette knife clean. If you're kind of a clean freak like I am. I like to clean up as I go along. Okay, so now let's look at um, putting some paint on there. If you see here, we've got the collage elements and then we've got some paint on there. So let us put some paint on it. And in this case, I am gonna use a brush, a couple of brushes here. So, you know what, let me move these other postage stamps out of the way so I don't have any accidents there. Okay. And then uh, I'll move this other fluid matte medium out of the way. Um, okay, so what color do we want to use here? I think, you see how this is like sort of a yellow, a greeny yellow right there? I like the way that pops off. So let's put some of that color somewhere else. And um, to get that color, here's, 
you want to be sure that you're using a paint on top of here that is opaque. Because if you use a paint that is transparent, what's going to happen is that the darkness, for instance, if you put it on here, the darkness of that color is going to show through and then the paint is not going to look the color that it did when it came out of the tube. So you want to paint that's opaque to go over top of the darker colors. So for instance, this one, most uh, artist paint tubes have, if it's not like craft paint, but it's artist grade paint, it'll have a, a notification on there as to whether it is um, opaque or transparent. So this symbol right here means that this is opaque. Sometimes it'll even say it. Let me see if one of these says it on it or it says opaque. Hold on a second. Oh, this is one that's transparent. See the little block that's open like that? That one's transparent. And I know there's one here that says opaque. See how that says opaque on it? So we know this is opaque. We know this is opaque. So either a little block like that or it says opaque. So I want to use something that is opaque. Now, if you have a color that's transparent, but you want to make it opaque, you have to add it to white. So here's the white. You add it to white or you add it to another color called Titan Buff, which is like an ivory color. And that's how you can turn it opaque. So let's put some of the white here. And then let me make sure this is not going. Yep, that's good. Um, and then let's use um, some of this yellow. Now this is the transparent yellow, but I'm gonna put that there. And now I need something opaque because the, uh, well, the white is opaque and then this yellow happens to be transparent, but that's okay, I'm tinting with it. What's another color? Um, this one was the opaque one. So I'm gonna show you the difference here, okay? So this one is opaque and you see what it looks like here. And then this one I'm gonna mix. So let me use my palette knife. I'm mixing some of the fluorescent yellow in with white. And looky there. I have essentially the same color, just a little bit brighter there, right? Now, um, do I have some green here? Hmm. I have this kind of blue green. Let's put some of this blue green in there just to see because it's kind of the color that's in the background here. Pink, just a tiny bit. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. A lot of what I do when I'm painting is experimenting. Yes. Okay. It's a little bit too close to this color of a green. So I'm gonna take some of this other opaque yellow and put it in there, lighten the color just a little bit. Well, that's kind of an interesting color. And now that is going to be an opaque color, all right? It's actually uh, what's called a high tone, meaning it's a bright color that is um, in this family right here, between here and here. So let's give it a try. And I'm just going to set this aside. Huh? And then let's pick it up with a brush like this. And remember that is opaque. And what if I just do some circles with it? What the heck? Notice what am I doing here? I'm overlapping the corner of that just a little bit. I don't want to obscure the stamp. I just want to um, make sure that different elements touch each other so they talk well to each other. Okay. Now, this is red. This is green, right? They're opposite each other on the color wheel. They look good next to each other but they would not look good mixed together, mixed like that. But they look good when they're next to one another like this. They're, that is a good color combination to have uh, butting up against each other. All right, so that's something interesting there. Let's put it somewhere else like over here. 
Some people like to do little teardrops or sometimes uh, little dashes. Let's do a few dashes here. Now, sometimes when they dry, they're not as opaque as you thought they were. And so you can always go back and add more later, like a second coat to help make it more um, more trans, more opaque. I'm sorry. Okay. And then let's do this here. All right, just to kind of have a design going on. Now this area over here looks a little lonely, right? There's a lot going on over here. We need to do something else over here to, to help somebody's eye go around the page, right? So let's see what else we can do over here. And uh, let me wipe out this brush right here. There we go. And what do we want to do there? Hmm, let me think about that for a second. Okay, we need some red, but we don't need just any kind of red. We need something that's sort of a magenta-like red. Oh, you know what? I have this beautiful color here called red ochre from uh, Artist Loft. That's a Michael's color. And you notice how a lot of this is very earthy. So let's bring some of this earthy red into there. And what I'm going to do is I want a round brush for this. Come on, round brushes. Okay, there's a nice little round brush. Because what I want to do with this is I want to go around her to bring some interest to her. Okay. Sometimes I do this with a brush or sometimes I do it with a, um, like this, an acrylic marker. You see how it's a similar color? So you can also do it with a marker. Just right now, I'm doing it with a brush. And what I like about the brush is it's uh, the line is more organic than if I do it with a, a marker that has a different kind of tip. Okay, why don't I do this? Something interesting here. You're really just experimenting, playing. This is part of like, mixed media is not being afraid to um, just go for it. Just go for it. You know why? The beautiful thing with acrylic paint is if you don't like it, if I did this painting and then I didn't like it, I could literally take my gesso, hold on, gesso, this white stuff right here, right? White gesso. I could paint over top of this two coats and then I could just start over. So that's the beautiful thing. You do not have to worry. No stress, no fuss, no muss. Okay. And so I would just keep building it out. You see how now what's happening is your eye is drawn to this bright color first. Then it comes this way. This is bringing you through the painting this way. And the music is kind of bringing you back up. So I'm keeping my focus in the piece and not off of the piece. Here I'm keeping the focus in the piece because the word that came with that on that little piece of music is to the right of the piece of music. So again, it's keeping the eye inside your painting and that gives you good composition. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Clean that off. So for right now, I'm going to set this aside. Normally, I would let that dry, and I would look at it, and I would say, oh, well, maybe maybe I want to glue this down on there uh, with that interesting string. What if I glue it on there this way? You know, so you can take a look at other. After this layer of paint is dry, I would go back and decide if I wanted to glue more items down using my gel medium or my other like bindex in the bottle like this. Um, and then another layer of paint and on and on and on. Now, once I've gotten all of my layers on that I feel like I want to have on, which would be this piece right here. Let me set that one aside. Let's clean this. 
since I'm not going to use. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me grab a piece of serendipity paper. If you weren't here earlier, what I like to do is keep papers beside me. So if I have leftover paint, I can go ahead and just put the leftover paint on an item like this. This one happens to be a four by six piece of paper, watercolor paper in this case. And then that becomes the base. Hey, I know I like these colors already. I was using them, right? And then that becomes the base for another piece of artwork that I'm going to do exactly the same thing I just showed you. I'm gonna audition different pieces of paper and then uh, I'm gonna paint over top of it, maybe a postage stamp, some markers, and I'm gonna create, this happens to be a greeting card, but they become uh, their own pieces of artwork. And that's what I do with leftover paint like that. I have a, what I call a no paint left behind policy in my studio. So all the paint gets used up one way or another. <laughs> See, this is the one we did earlier and it's already almost dry and ready to go for another collage. Okay, I have to clean this, right? It's super easy. Ooh, you know what I'm noticing? Check it out, check it out. See the airplane, the SAS here, that's a Scandinavian Airways. See that green in the background? Doesn't that look like that green right there? It does, so why don't we, <laughs> we're just gonna use some of that green. What the heck, why not? Let's, uh, do this just for the just for the heck of it i'm gonna put some a little wave right here why just because i can okay let's it's not as uh it's a little bit transparent i want it to be a little more opaque so i'm putting a second coat right Oh, how fun. Now I'm noticing because the background is black, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna bring it up into the black because it's kind of an opaque color. Oh yes, how fun is that? All right, let's do this. I'm gonna bring a little bit more of it down here. Uh, what am I gonna do? Like that, or maybe little plus signs like that. Just play and experiment with different uh, shapes and designs. Okay, so that just sort of brings that together and includes a little bit of that green in there. Now, notice there's nothing here. There's nothing down here. Well, I am gonna put my signature here but I wanted to show you how after all of that acrylic is dry, what do I do? I come back in and I do a little bit more refinement here. So let me move that paint out of the way. And uh, one of the things I can do is come in with, a, um, with an acrylic marker. So these are acrylic markers. Uh, and that way I can make lines. Um, but what I really like to do is I like to come in with um, oil pastels or what I call woodies. So if you've been in my workshops before, you've seen me use woodies. Woodies are, it's actually water soluble, but these are wax crayons. Originally designed for use with kids, so they're non-toxic, the woodies are, but um, Oh my gosh, they are so much fun, even for us adults. So what I like to do is, um, for instance, the background is pink. So why don't I take the pink one? Oh, and these are Karen Dosh. Look at this. This is adults. As adults, we get to play with crayons. So <laughs> these are the woody, um, like the kids, uh, wax pastels. And here is the Neo Color One wax pastels from Karen Dosh. Now these are not water soluble, meaning you can't use water on them to re, uh, rehydrate them, but these are water soluble. So you would be able to use water on those. Um, so for instance here, 
if I had, uh, let's use the green, like a little bit darker color green, right? And now I can come in here. Let's work on top of a, hold on a second. Let me see. I'm going to work on top of something that's hard, not the top of the table. Ugh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let me do this. I think. Okay. So I just wanted to work on top of something hard there. So let's take, um, this is the non-water soluble uh, crayon. There we go. And what do I want to do? What if I want to go around this? I like to frame things a lot. So you see how I'm going right over top of the acrylic? That's okay. Right? I'm bringing interest there. Um, now I need something up here. Let me... Um, just go around these a little bit, like give them a green shadow, right? So you can do things like that. Uh, let's see, what other colors do I have here that would work? Well, I've got a pink one. Let's see what we can do with the pink one. Uh, maybe I want to make marks on the edges like this with the pink one on the black. So these are uh, wax crayons, artist-grade uh, pigments on those. Okay, so then uh, I'll just bring it up this way. So this is what I do to um, finish off my pieces with more mark making, is I will use either the um, wax crayons or something like the woodies. Let's see, what would be a good color of woody? I've got the pink here. So what if I go in here and just do the edges of this with the pink for the heck of it? The woodies are very creamy. Oh my gosh, they're so creamy. Okay, just for something different. Let me just go here a circle like that. Um, now, of course, I need something in this area over here. I've got some more yellow. What about the red? Because I've got red down here and I've got red here. So I just did a, um, a circle right there. Why don't I do a circle right, like a spiral right here? And then another spiral right here. And then go in here a little bit with the spiral. So now I've got the pink and the red. Okay. So that's how you can use these to accent your artwork after all of the acrylic is dry. All right. So that is it for this part of the show.